I don't think we should ever let our ingredients limit the type of stories we want to tell or the type of food that we want to cook. If the beef is good, you should be able to boil it and it should still taste good. So this is Chiu Chao style boiled Wagyu hot pot. It's a simple and elegant way to show off the deliciousness of Wagyu. The easiest way to do this is to just boil water, maybe put a little bit of salt in it if you want. Um, but we're going to take ourselves a little bit more seriously and we're going to build a really beautiful, clear bone broth. This is a Chinese style, we call it Ching Tong, so clean broth. Cold water, bones in, wash it a couple times, bring it up to a boil, we'll rinse it again, and then add more water in the pressure cooker that you can get really high temperatures of cooking with pressure without agitating all the proteins. The proteins trap fats and things and it emulsifies, and that's how you get a white, opaque broth. The clear broth is what we're aiming for here. Um, this is rice wine, mi jiu, kind of like the clear cousin of Shaoxing wine. Most people don't feel enough of their daikon, and that's what makes their daikon bitter. Some people like to describe it as applying science to cooking, but cooking in and of itself is already a science. You're using different languages to describe the same sort of magic that's happening. We can pretend to be smarty pants about food, just like over-intellectualize everything, and that's sort of like in and of itself a type of entertainment for nerds like me. It also helps you produce a more consistent product. It sort of democratizes the different types of cuisines as well, right? Like one of my greatest hopes is that Chinese food will be respected the way Italian, French, and Japanese food will be. And the only way for that to happen is if we speak a universal language of science and history and immigrant history and so on and so forth. It helps sort of paint a more holistic map of how flavor is created. Clear as day. We're going to reinforce this base broth. Shaki mushrooms. Cilantro. The strongest cilantro flavor is in this time, just a little bit. And this is Chinese celery, just a handful of this in here, not too much. Okay, beautiful. Just let all of this boil. Quick pivot here. This is picanha. Any kind of wagyu will do. I like picanha because it's quite lean. I think it's important to eat all parts of the animal. Thinner than you think you need it, with the fat cap on. I mean, look at that marbling. This is why we picked this wagyu. The marbling allows it to maintain its texture over time. You can cook it a little bit more and get more of that beef flavor. And if anything, actually, you want that wagyu to cook a little longer so more of the fat can render. Look at this. Ah, damn. Making me miss home. Sometimes I speak in grandiose terms about history and science and all these things, but at the end of the day, my core memories of Wagyu are fun, pleasurable, joyful memories, right? You eat and you're like, oh, this is great, this is delicious. We're swishing it around shabu shabu style. I wouldn't want anything to stop me from enjoying that deliciousness, including how we cook that piece of meat. Don't let the Wagyu restrict your cooking. You don't have to dance around the piece of meat. You can cook it well, you can cook it in water, you can cook it with fire. Give it all the love that it deserves.